Hello again in a session about ProCloud server configuration. And um, I think the most important thing is that you think not only about authentication and security, but you should also know that behind Enterprise Architect, you can use all the functionals, all the functions that are provided by Microsoft, for example, or by Apache um, that is also supporting Enterprise Architect. So I'm going back to India and the question was um, how to configure the security or to make it even more secure. So I connect to my Indian server. Yes. And uh, Internet Information Server allows after I have put my credentials here um, allows um, will authorization and authentication with a different a lot of different possibilities so what i have configured here is internet information server um, okay once again he's not creating my index but don't care we have the internet information server and uh, we can see that we have here a configuration for the server and the sites we have a default website and the server and for authentication, we have activated anonymous authentication. On the default website, we have ad, uh, activated already Windows authentication. So that means that any Windows user that is configured on the server um, has the right to access also the website. Um, Windows uh, user configuration either done by Active Directory um, or you have Windows, um, it's a um, computer management, and there we have a local user uh, possibilities and user groups. And now we have only one local user that is uh, me, uh, but I can add, a, a, I can define a user group, meaning I define a new uh, Sparks uh, user group. Sparks group and should say it's safe. And you can define uh, there is the Sparks group, and you can define, of course, users that are not administrators but just uh, related to a name it's Sparks01. Uh, another password make it very secure not sure if it's allowed but uh, don't change the password uh, never expires and uh, hopefully i have no high level secret <laughs> created uh, so okay better password and that's all i have to do to give a user the right to access uh, web ea or even enterprise architect through pro cloud so that's uh, that's the easy game come on create <laughs> he's not happy with me blocking oh i have a problem with my internet connection at home so i have to verify if the internet connection is available yes but um, sometimes you have not that good lines at home so we wait a little um, in the meanwhile we have already configured and uh, if it's only the line broken to the remote desktop we can uh, verify if we can access the pro cloud server in india already with this new user and uh, i'd just say okay this is the connection and um, if you have been already logged on with this credential with this windows application then he will not ask again so i have to close enterprise architect so my remote session is open again so i can store this user Ooh, even more complex requests okay um,
create. Okay. So this should be a very secure one. Um, and I can add this user to a specific group. I just say member of users um, and I add, of course, the Sparks group too. And so now this user is part of this session. And uh, if I want to access uh, this, the repository in India using my connection string through Internet Information Server, this Windows um, authentication pops up and I can type in my new created user. And then um, I can access already the repository. So the Internet Information Server security based on Windows authentication is very easy to manage. Yeah? So we just have to create users uh, that are related to uh, the, user, the users group. Um, of course, you can turn on Windows authentication on website level or on server level. I will stay on website level because I want to have different configurations later on. Um, what you can do here um, and it's not activated at the moment, you can add an, another uh, possibility to have even more configurations uh, for, for uh, the Internet Information Server. So we go to the server management and we want to add a role and a feature. And there is a feature called URL Out and Authorize, I think. Um, I think it's a feature for, um, for my internet can i find it here uh no then it's a feature from the web server um, it's a server role and we have here web server functions and for security only three of nine are installed so what we can add here is also url authorization and then you are define uh, able to uh, define other restrictions then there is ip restrictions and and so on you can make it that digest authentication or a client side mapping and you want to have centralized ssl management and so on and so on so there is a huge possibility to have um, security activated with internet information server but now i will activate only url authorization as an additional feature and um, and I want to show what it's possible with that. So we wait for installation. So once again, this server is in India. I am in uh, Vienna, in Austria, um, at home at the moment. So not the fastest internet connection, not the company. So we um, activate URL authorization and uh, wait for installation of this feature. Um, as soon as it's coming up. Um, another site I can show in the meanwhile, of course, this Windows author authorization is not coming up only with Enterprise Architect. It also comes up if you want to access the web. So if you go to my South Indian server, uh, then we can open it. Uh, but um, because of this uh, authorization topic, he will ask me here to um, for the user and it must be a user that is a Windows user. Again, and now I'm at the South India repository and if I pop up to next um, and there is no uh, Enterprise Architect security activated, but I can jump into the repository directly, but I have to authorize as a Windows user that I can access this repository. So in the meanwhile, the feature should be installed. Yes, it is. And uh, if we go to Internet Information Server, then you will see uh, that there is already another feature coming up. So I think I have to reload. Uh, 
the server just to be sure and then I go to the website and activate Oh, I should be there. Authentication, configuration editor. Hmm. No, it is not. Maybe I have to open. Maybe I have to open an additional feature. Okay, maybe I have to re reopen the management console that it's really started. Um, so where is it? Then I the information server then we should have this additional feature showing, I believe it should be on the website site level. Authorization rules, this is now activated. Maybe I've not seen it before, but it is here <laughs> and now. And here we can, here we can see that uh, at the moment for all users access is allowed. So we have here the possibility to add and allow rule, to add and deny rule. So I can even say, okay, I only want to allow specific roles and user groups, um, specific users only. And maybe it's also possible, in addition, it's also possible to allow only specific verbs like get, post, uh, execute, and so on. Um, so in our case, I say, okay, I want only that Sparks sparks group is allowed just check double check with my configuration of the computer manage, management if i have sparks group here yes i have so only users that are part of the sparks group are allowed to access uh, the repository additionally this is also allowed but i can say okay this rule role is not existing anymore um, and it's only allowed for sparks group users roles um, this because this is on website level therefore a file will be generated so it's not all about um, having UI tools but if we go here then there is a file generated that's called web config and in this web config we have all this local uh, stuff that is related to a local to a website um, and I want to open it with Notepad. And here you see that we have the users, any users are not allowed, and we have we access the right uh, for Sparks group. That means why does it remove? Because generally it is allowed. So we can also see that on the server level, there's also this authorization rules. and this says by default all users are allowed but in this website so it likes a hierarchy um, in this website we just deny to have the access to for all users it's only for sparks group so if i try to access uh, this repository again so i just maybe it's really a new session we'll, we'll see um, no it remembers so i have to restart or make a new session of um, Edge in this case, um, then I can type in the connection to the server and then he will not ask me again. So I have really to close all the sessions. Um, 113, so I have to open, then it asks again. And if I try to log in as administrator and I'm not part of um, not part of the group that is allowed, so I'm not able to access the repository. If I use the user that is part of the Sparks group, so then uh, we can access. So it's very easy to use the default Internet Information Server configuration for making such configurations for restrictions um, to enterprise architect repositories. Additionally, just to remember, um, the access to enterprise architect is, is done by this SSEP file. And in our case, we have only one website hosting Web EA and the backend for enterprise architect. So all the rules we can define here um, are also defined for enterprise architect. 
So if I restart Enterprise Architect here and I try to access even as an administrator to the repository in South India, once again, this Windows authentication pops up. So I type in my Windows uh, administration credentials. And he will not allow that I access the repository. If I use the Sparks group, so meaning a user of the Sparks group, then it is possible. So the good story is if you make authentication and security activating uh, the Internet Information Server functions, then Enterprise Architect, Web EA, everything is using this technique too. Um, and I think it's a very powerful combination uh, for Sparks Pro Cloud Server with Enterprise Architect to use these features of Internet Information Server or, of course, with Apache, but um, in a Windows environment, you typically will rely on uh, Internet Information Server. And I think it's a very powerful function to activate this here. The last step I want to show, because it's a small one, is how to secure a website using SSL. So for SSL, you have, by default, a binding up to a, pro to a, to a board. And I can say, OK, I want to have SSL activated. And for this configuration, we uh, have to get an SSL certificate. And um, these SSL certificates are on server level. So you can have only one SSL certificate. That means there is only uh, on port 443 because it's the default port. And if I go to SSL certificates, I can say, OK, I create a self-signed one that's good enough for our demonstration or you can request a new one and say we say for sparks uh sparks south india india server we create a certificate and we store it typically in the web hosting that's a typical place for server certificates that are related to that. And so we have a certificate that is already valid for a year uh, typically, and it will give warnings because it's a self-signed certificate. Um, and to activate this certificate for this website, there we have to say, OK, we want to define the bindings. At the moment, we are only hearing on port 80, but we can add that we want also to hear on port 443 with HTTPS. And we can say, OK, there is a certificate, and it's the self-signed certificate used here. OK, fine. The, so at the moment, it's allowed to go through HTTP and HTTPS to this server. I leave this activated, just to show what's the difference. And I close now the configuration. The final step we have to do in our environment is that I have to activate the port uh, 443 in my Azure uh, portal because I'm sure at the moment I'm not allowed I'm not allowed to go to port go to port So no, that's not the right configuration. It's the wrong user. So I have to sign out again. Go back to my India server. I have to use this user. And for my Indian server, it's the Sparks. SRV 0 for networking. I configure now that the port 443 is also allowed. Um, so I decide for HTTPS. Um, just it's a default rule, so it's very easy to activate. Uh, we can wait a little, uh, but when I go to the web or browser, oh, I have been already, sorry. Um, 
there is this possibility to go with the, via the IP address. Um, but now I can type in HTTPS with uh, the IP address 13 whatever 1371 so it's easier to copy hey come on follow my rules um, so it's much easier to copy it here so once again HTTPS and now it is also available through a secured website Hopefully, the rule is already activated. HTTPS is activated. Sometimes you have to refresh after you shortly have activated. It says it's not secure because it's a certificate that is not trusted by my local machine. Um, but we load it uh, because we trust this website. We have this author authentication activated. So, uh, security, uh, so encryption and authentication. And so we can uh, log in now through a secured website with a server issue because the server is a self-site one. Uh, so it's identifying this server. And uh, yes, if you really like another uh, IP address, a better one, then we can make a domain name entry. But it was the most important thing to how to activate HTTPS. And the same is with Enterprise Architect, of course. So if you want to connect uh, to the website, to the cloud, using now HTTPS as a protocol, then it's the port 443. It's also raising the issue that the website is not valid because it's not trusted for company. The date is correct and the name is not correct because I named it different than the IP address. Uh, but at the end, uh, we can connect now to the repository using the right Windows credentials and uh, using HTTPS for interaction. So what we have learned today were two major things. The first was uh, use Internet Information Server to get the, all, all the features of authentication for users and the authorization for a user. It's not related to enterprise architect users. It's related to the connectivity and the accessibility to the repository. Use HTTPS, of course, it's recommended to have an encrypted or a self-signed uh, uh, certificate, depending on your budget. But I really recommend to use official certificates um, for Enterprise Architect. And Enterprise Architect really allows, and once again, uh, we are here in Austria and communicating to a server in South India, and uh, Enterprise Architect allows using this environment to be a very powerful multi-site tool. Thank you.